Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And this is ZD Donahue. And this podcast is brought to you by Sudafed. Yeah. Because I'm on Sudafedrin and Mallory was on it for what? Like a week. Yeah. I might get on it again. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we, I think in order we, to function, we, we have had to do this. We sound okay. We sound good. I think we sound fine. I. You am, actually look okay. What do I look like? Oh. You look great. <laughs> and um, and we're actually showed up dressed alike. Yeah, we're wearing uh the same shirt um that we had printed for for middle daughter's thirtieth birthday. I thought this was her bachelorette party. Oh maybe it was a bachelor who knows? One of those no, things. It was Lindsay's, I've worn it more than once. So Lindsay's bachelorette party and it's uh it's a shirt that is a play on a, a band name. So instead of Josie and the Pussycats it's Lindsay and the Pussy Sharks because she, she loves sharks. sharks so much. And we had a shark pinata there. And no, that that was the birthday. See, I think oh, you're getting okay. Two shark- so everything. Yeah. Anyway, we do shark themed stuff wherever we are for her. And mine says "Mom" on the back, and Mallory says "Sister." Little no, little L- sister. Little little sister. And my husband was there, and his said "Brother from another mother." Yeah. yeah. And what did the other sister say? I don't know. What a big, big sister. sister. Is that <laughs> what it said? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So we are are we're gonna we're gonna podcast about a really important topic. Uh so we, we will be getting serious is, like we do. Right now. And we have already gotten the review on iTunes that said we talk about too much personal stuff. So that Is that true? They probably stopped listening anyway. Um this podcast is long overdue and it's something that we cover of like in classes and it would discuss a lot and it's we're going to discuss different types of fabric but before we get into it I just want to s- tell a little story about how we tried to convey this information once before <laughs> oh my gosh a, a little story I think it's a big story <laughs> so if Linda Bertine's listening she'll remember this this was in the early days of creating videos and I was uh filming new camera new camera New camera, new microphone. Right. And I was filming Mom and Linda Bertine talking about different types of fabric. and It was a series. It was going to... No, I think it was one big, long video. Yeah, but it was going to be a series. Yeah. So... And this might end up being a series, too. But when uh, we were in, like, the 35th minute of filming or something like that, I realized that the microphone hasn't been on the whole time. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I had been standing on a box in order to get Linda Bertine and I in the same frame on, on the and camera they, for that. You know, we turn out we have to turn off the air conditioning right. to film because oh the microphone might pick up pick it up, you know. The microphone wasn't picking anything up because I didn't have it turned on. So anyway, that's like I don't know, eight years ago or something. Right. That we didn't have that problem. And now we're gonna record a podcast about it and the mics are on, I can see the waveforms on my computer Good. Screen. Don't lose this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so there, there's a couple of ways we can approach this. Like, what were the first things we used as fabric? Or what is the most common thing we use as fabric? And I'd which say, way should we go? I'd say the first way. Kind of start from, okay. like, the basic um, fabric that, yeah, like you said, is probably the, the I don't, I guess I don't know this for sure, but probably the first way I, I would fabric. think the first thing garments were made. Well, are you even things sure. like covers or blankets, whatever sure. you would, what you would like to call them? Oh, you know though. Well, so are you going to talk about woven fabrics? No, I'm going to no. talk about hides. hides. Okay, hides All were right. first. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about hides then. Hides uh, in our four categories right. of fabric that we are kind of broadly um, broken these down uh, into hides. Wovens, knits, and bonded fabrics. Right. And we'll start out with hides, Mom. You want to start? Well, so, of course, I mean, as we, as civilization began, we went out and we killed animals to survive, and we used every part of them. Yum. We used, <laughs> yum, we used the 
you know, the meat for nutrition. We use the bones for tools and jewelry, different things and like needles. that. Needles. Needles. Yeah. Well, needle, a needle is a tool, dear. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, it's right, it's right, interesting. Right. That, you Our know. utensils. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. whatever. Yeah. It, tools would, would cover utensils and mm-hmm. needles and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, the hides, they would tan. So they would scrape them and scrape them and scrape them till they were more soft and subtle. They would dry them first, then scrape them, and I think they hung them again. And you know, there's a whole process in the tanning type process. Um, in fact, in some civilizations, you can read about how the women chewed mm-hmm. the hides to make them supple and soft, mm-hmm. in order, you know, to make them wrap around the body or feel good on the body. Because you can imagine just a big old leather something. You know, or or they, it was stiff on you. Also, so hides and like furs. Furs are hides. They are yes. animal skins right. with the hairs Without on them. Without the hair, right? Furs have the hair, right? Hides, but I mean that right. And and the fur would be turned in or out. Mm-hmm. You know, towards the body. Um, furs were very common as covers or blanket type things or cloaks or you know the outer garment. Uh, to keep you warm. So, so that's sort of like nature's ready-made fabric source, right. right? And the thing about hides is, of course, they came in weird shapes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. sometimes they would take those shapes and use them, or they would cut them down and piece them or whatever. And like you said, they also had to have some sort of way to pierce these. And they might use the bones or they may, you know, depending on the society and what they had learned to use as tools, they also had needles. When when I say needles, they were more like an awl. Mm -hmm. They just put a hole in it Mm -hmm. and then they would take strips of um, leather or hide and, you know, weave these together. Sometimes they would also use something like some some sort of twine or vine to have do you, this also. Have you read the article about the oldest sewing needle being found in Siberia? Oh, no. It's tens of thousands and of years And does it have old. an eye in yeah, it? Yeah, it has okay, an eye. Okay, because some of them, see, a lot of very, them didn't have an eye. It's very fine. Well, that's right. why they call it a needle, right. not an all. Mm-hmm. You know, so... It has an eye, and I'll I'll link to it. Um, I read about it, and then it, it kind of went around in the sewing right. world of people. Oh, yay, the oldest needle, you know. Um, was it made of stone or bone? I think it was bone. Yeah. And uh, but like I said, I'll link to it, make sure to. But it was found, I think, in Siberia. Um, and, yeah, it was really, really, really old. And I think it was finer than someone might have in- Believed, expected. Expected, yeah. Um, but of course, when you go back that far, I mean, there are civilizations that had technologies and lost technologies right. and had technologies and lost technologies. When, when I was an old nurse and young nurses were coming on and they would we would talk about what it used to be in technology and how things came forward. I used to say that I was a nurse when the needles were made of stone. <laughs> <laughs> so that was something I used to say. But anyway, um, honestly, I never stuck a person with stone that I know of. Um but I, I guess the other thing about uh, that technology is it's not really changed like a whole lot because the hide, hides don't change. I mean, the way you put them together and piece them together is very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't tend to seam leathers or hides together the same way you would do other fabrics. You yeah. tend to lay them on top of each other or make them meet each other instead of a seam mm-hmm. and then opening it. Now, there are some, but... Um, and some not leather, always some leather working you don't uh, I mean there's leather can be worked a lot of different ways but some types of leather working you do punch holes first and absolutely string, string absolutely. through you, your you, you, yes you, you, your leather or your uh, or your thread or your right. cord or whatever is being right. used to do that right. so yeah you're you're totally right that with the way we work with hide isn't so different no yeah. it really it really ha- of course we have needles now now on a sewing machine. Mm-hmm. Um, people say, oh, and, and you, I heard you talk to somebody about this not too long ago. I hope and, I was um, right. You no, were. Okay. <laughs> and, and they said, oh, well, when I sew with vinyl, I use a leather needle. And you said, no, not a good idea. Yeah. Because a leather needle, if you look at it like straight on, it's, it sort of looks like a cross or a star sort of shape. It slices mm-hmm. and makes that hole. Um, and you don't want to slice vinyl. Yeah, and so that'll be the last type right. of right that's fabric a, we talked about. That's a bonded about. fabric. <laughs> yeah, and, and you don't want to slice vinyl because when you slice vinyl, it will tend to keep you know keep splitting. Going. Where with the hide, hides are they're somewhat self-healing, even though once you punch them, they are punched. 
Right. So there is a scarring, mm-hmm. but they will tend to come back together a little bit. Yeah. So, um, well, and they the hide, I think, uh, different from the other fabrics we're going right. to talk about. You know, you're supposed to put, like, moisturizer on right. your leather. You, you need know? to oil your leather yeah, and, and, and things your, like that. Your right. leather can be kept uh, feeling and looking a certain way. Right. Uh, if you take care of it properly, right. or it can crack and become brittle, and da 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 da. Absolutely, so that's that's very interesting. And ta- and they can be dyed and not dyed, oh, sure. and, and kept natural. There's um, all kinds of. But things. I guess since we are, <clears throat> we're not leather working experts, right? Like the way you or I would probably use leather nowadays, we'd use a garment weight leather, it's right? Like thinner leather, that fine can, and soft and supple. And usually, soft. it's not like. Saddle leather, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and we would use a sewing machine, me right. and you. You know, we'd probably use a sewing machine. Actually, I'm uh, trying to make my baby some shoes. We would we... probably use a polyester thread. A metrosine would poly- probably be yeah. my f- what I would use. And, and a leather needle in our sewing machine. Absolutely. And the other thing we would do is um, we would possibly glue it or tape it together first. I like the double-sided type tape wonder tape kind yes, of stuff yes wonder tape is a very good product where you tape that you know you're overlapping your seam yeah. um with that instead of just meeting oh. it up or whatever and you know so your seam is sort of there and that's your sort of your basting i also like uh with leather i was binding something mm-hmm. in leather a planner and i really like using wonder clips and i think right. what we need to say here is you mentioned it earlier. When you poke a hole in the leather, the hole's going to be there forever, right? right? It might self-heal, but it scars it. Yeah, there's right. there's something. There's going to be something there. Right. So you can't use straight pins. I mean, good luck trying to pin in the first place, like, physically. But, you know, right. Wonder Clips are really great for some applications right. if you are putting together two edges. So when someone comes to me and says, oh, I need to replace a zipper in a, a leather skirt or a leather mm-hmm. jacket or something, I tell them, you know, this is a particular skill. And what you really try to do when you do this is you try to re-pierce in the hole where you have taken out. You don't have to, but what is going to happen is it's like you get a, almost a perforation. Yeah, you don't want to make more because holes. Because you've made too many holes, yeah. and, of course, that weakens it. Mm-hmm. So when you're replacing a zipper in that leather jacket or whatever, you know, it, you, you're trying to repiece the same hole. Now, if you take it someplace to an alterations uh, establishment or something like that, and they say it's going to be $35, $45 to put this zipper in, they deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. The zipper might only cost, you know, $15, but, I, you know, whatever they're charging to put it in, it they probably have a person that works on know, leather. A, a le- like a leather specialty person, then that's what, you know, that person does most of the time. Well, and um, it was kind of my instinct to talk about woven fabrics next, but maybe we should talk about bonded fabrics next because those are the fabrics that try, they do lots of things, but right. they, one of the things that they do a lot of the times is try to imitate hide. Right, although I do believe woven fabrics probably in evolution came next. Yeah, yeah right. I agree. But, but, but the, yes, the thing about bonded fabrics is, When they say bonded, they're basically pressed together. Um, Sometimes there is an agent used, uh, like would be a bonding agent, which is glue or glue-like or um, what do I want to say? And it's it's not always glue. No, sometimes it's the fibers. Yeah, the fibers. Like like a felted fabric. Yeah, so felt is a bonded fabric. Vinyl is a bonded right. fabric. Heat can be the bonder. The bonder. Right, like something melting. To, like mm-hmm. fleece is melted together. It's all these little spun little fibers. plasticky fibers that are um, basically sort of mashed, and oftentimes heat is applied to keep them together. Yeah, so th- it's a process that's not weaving and it's not knitting. Right. The it's- fibers are going in random patterns there's but an, somehow they're stuck together. There's no grain, which right. we'll talk about with there's, woven There's fabrics. absolutely no grain. There's no bias. There's no nothing. It's like a hide. And like ultra suede doesn't have any stretch, but felt does have some. Well, ultra suede will un- stretch depending on the grain. I guess what I'm, right. I'm thinking about. You're, thinking, you're right. You're right. It will you're right. stretch out uh-huh. is I guess what. Okay. 
It doesn't stretch when you're testing it and you hold it and you go, oh, this is stable. Mm -hmm. But it will stretch out. And there are stretchy suades, I guess. I mean, there's there's all sorts of kind of combinations of these things. Well, and leather stretches. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. But Mm -hmm. it's it's not. It's stable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't have a stretch to it. It's like after worn and worn and worn, it like thins it out or whatever. And like fake leather, patent leather, or as the kids are calling it these days, vegan leather. Vegan, well, patent leather <laughs> is real leather. But well, oh, okay. It's a but process. It, but then but you're talking about pleather. Pleather, right? Which I thought that's what patent leather mm-hmm. was. It's not. Oh. Patent leather is real leather. Oh, okay. It's it's some sort of shiny application i do not know how it works but it is real leather i didn't know that patent okay. leather is real even though it looks like plastic i thought it was vinyl this <laughs> and whole time. some plastic or vinyl looks like patent leather yeah. but no they are not interchangeable well oh. one it one is vegan and one is not okay so yeah vegan leather which is pla- which is which is plastic which is uh synthetic which is not made from an animal is also bonded yeah yeah so that's bonded and um you know from a couple podcasts ago that mom's not a big fan of fleece. <laughs> Which, I don't of, like fleece. Of, of the, of the poly fleece. I'm, and I, I'm laughing at you, but I'm not a big fan of fleece either. I'm not, uh, I, but it, it doesn't have a, no one tells you to go out and buy fleece with a this percent stretch, but gosh, right. that stuff is unstable. Well, again, you're talking about quality or grade too. I yeah, think. Yeah, that's true. You know, there's very stable fleece and there's very unstable fleece. And a lot of the times when you see these big bolts like in the box stores yeah. and they put it on sale to get you through the door so that you'll buy a lot of it, that's not real good fleece. And you can work with it and you can work with it once, but if you try and work with it more than once, oh, you know. And help you think about uh, bonded fabrics don't ravel. That's correct. Okay, that's um, why you get the no soap project. Yeah, that's out why of you get those fabrics. tie fleece blankets. Right. Okay, that's why you can do the you know raw edge applique with like ultra suede or with wool. You can also do that with leather. Leather doesn't ravel. In case anybody need, needed us to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> um. So uh, they that is kind of a characteristic right of bonded fabrics and of hides that are similar they they do not you know they because don't... They're, they're not knitted or woven so they don't have a stretch or a give or a direction to them the fibers aren't organized right in a way where they'll come apart they're organized right. all crazy and glued like you said or heated or pressured together. i mean when you felt something to get a felted fabric you know you're like twisting and twining those things it's 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 just like this big huge you know twisted conglomeration of fibers right. there's no organization to them except that they're all twisted around each other well, and, and won't let go that's what makes a felt that's what makes like a good felt is you've laid out the fi- the fibers this way right. and then this way and then that way and that right. way and, and the- usually you've wet them and stabbed them and mm-hmm. all this so that they are just you know mashed together so well and before we get an email we know there are lots of different ways that you can felt absolutely okay and you can felt different types of fibers we know yes yeah you know so anyway this is an overall on types right. of fabrics so the the leather and- but we love your comment yeah Yes, yes. The the leather uh, and the bonded, they kind of, it's funny that they share some similarities and yet I think they're like on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Like one is, um, can be like. One is very natural and one is very. One can be what? very synthetic. I guess, I but I say that and then I think about like pure wool felt. Right. You know, which is very, you know, quote unquote natural. Right. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that they are at the ends of the spectrum right. there. Right. Um, um, I, I would say the same thing um, with. Vinyl and leather is once you pierce it, vinyl is not self-healing at all. That's why you don't want to use that leather needle because it's a slice. I prefer a very sharp denim needle or a micro... Uh, micro tags. Tex, uh, very, very sharp. And one thing and I try and use the smallest needle possible. You've pointed out about denim needles um, before that I'd like to remind people about, and probably because it was new information to me a few months uh-huh. ago. Is that it has a coating on it, like a I Teflon think, coating? I think Microtex do, too. Do they? I, I believe that there's a certain type of, I don't know if it's Teflon per se, but some sure. sort of, and Teflon is a registered trademark, right. so, you know, I don't know what's in it But either. some kind of uh, f- right. friction combating right, right, right. Absolutely. Uh, coating on it. And I do, I honestly think maybe Microtex has, too. I'm not sure. I'm sure we can look that up or figure that out. Well, and um, the smallest needle possible on the vinyl... I think that's another yes. thing. And, and that's something you have to try every vinyl. It is a different grade. You know, inexpensive vinyl 
is sometimes brittle so you might need to take a bigger stitch and maybe use a little bit bigger needle or a I was gonna say. medium you know now this is my funny story so when I was managing a fabric store one time and that would have been in the 90s I think or the early is that when you bought that suit of fit <laughs> <laughs> that's when I bought some of the suit fit. <laughs> but anyway um people would come in and the, the fabric store I worked in was a, a a family business, been in business for about 100 years, bridal, millinery, all kinds of things, leathers, vinyls, all the, you know, not your box store that you go into now. So, yeah. and, you, and you really did have to be quite knowledgeable to even work there because you were giving out this information and, and helping people make hats and yeah. wedding gowns Costumes and, and, and cover uh, pool tables, mm -hmm. all kinds of weird stuff. Okay, because we had the big, huge felt. Yeah, that was, yes. I remember, I, that was very interesting yeah, yeah there was and you did learn a lot you know uh being there but the guy this guy comes in and he wants to cover something i don't even remember what it was but i, I in my mind it went into some sort of man cave kind of thing i don't, i can't remember if this was a couch or the outside of a pool table or what but it was like a manly thing so anyway he said he wanted some naga hide yeah <laughs> and I honestly, with all of my purest intent, I tried to explain to this man that Nogahide was a trademark name, just like, you know. Um, Teflon or Velcro. Or Velcro, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, you know, um, Lycra for spandex. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a trade name and there are other generics out, you know, it's it's vinyl. It's Nogahide is vinyl. It's a synthetic leather. Yeah. Yes. It's a yes. And, um, Often in the 60s and the 70s, they would say, you have this naga hide interior or, you know, the chairs are covered in naga hide, but not hide. It wasn't really a hide because they put naga in front of it, right? They made it naga hide. So I tried everything. We had really nice vinyl. And I tried to convince this man this was a good quality vinyl that was going to work for what he wanted. It was scrubbable and cleanable and pliable and sewable and all of this. But he insisted on naga hide. And I tried to explain to him that basically that name was not out there anymore. Sure. That company, you know, what nothing was being manufactured under the name of naga hide anymore. And he just didn't believe me. And he laughed. And he did not buy our product. And it took everything from me to tell him that not all the Nagas were killed off in the 70s. Because <laughs> <laughs> he really got mad at me because I told him Naga Hyde was, you know, just, just vinyl. Not, yeah, he really he thought it he was something like specific. Right? He didn't like to hear that. So anyway, I don't know if he's out there listening. I doubt it. But um, I bet his man cave didn't turn out as well as if he would have taken my well, advice. Well, wouldn't it? Uh, maybe he found some old Naga. <laughs> he found some old Nagas. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> to, to butcher and tan. That's right. <laughs> anyway, so if you, you know, you'll, you'll hear things like that with the word hide in it or fleece in it or something. And, you know, think about it. What does it really mean? Right. I mean, they named it Naga Hide so that people would think it was similar to a hide. But that's not what it was. Sure. Right. Okay, Mom, you can't sew without thread, right? No. It, it doesn't work. Have you tried? Well, I have tried it. <laughs> I one time tried to sew without bobbin thread for like about ten minutes, and I realized someone had taken the bobbin. Out one of time, yeah. oh one, oh one time. Uh, well, uh, that particular that, that time, yeah, I've done that several times. So to keep you stocked up on threads, we have an awesome special for you. We have a set of ZD's neutrals. Absolutely, and they better be metrazine. They are metrazine. My one, favorite construction thread. And they're Metrazine 1,000 meter spools. You won't run out anytime soon. Yep. You can wind quite a few bobbins yeah, off of sure. it. So the ZD's neutral set is black, white, a light gray, and ZD's magical mauve color. Yes. It is this pinky mauve color that I use for so many things. And you wouldn't think it would blend in. Right. It works it, with red. It works with pink. I mean, it's, it sometimes it works, works with, with a gray and a brown. Or, yeah. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's a super. Topi colors. It's not something you think is a neutral, but we have everybody buy it and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I have right. that thread. I've used it on a yellow before. So I know. Yellows. It's funny. It's funny what it works on. It blends in. So if you go to sewhere.com. Works slash, on orange. Oh. <laughs> had to add that. 
excuse me. Okay, <laughs> if you go to sewhere.com slash neutrals, that's N-E-U-T-R-A-L-S, you will see the ZD's Neutrals Pack, and you can get 15% off of your order on the ZD's Neutral Pack by typing in code NEUTRAL. Hot deal. So happy. Sewing out loud. So, um... And all these, all these pro, all these fabrics, they've got different characteristics, and you might want to use different ones for different reasons. Like right. leather isn't automatically better than synthetic leather for everything, especially now because the new pleathers or you know uh, vegan leathers, vegan leathers <laughs> or whatever they are, the the faux leathers uh-huh. are very, very good quality now. Mm-hmm. And um, they sew really easy, and they are very self-healing. Right. So, especially in faux, faux suede, are like amazing. Yeah I, yeah, I love sewing with ultra suede right, and right. faux suede. Um, especially if you're gonna like something needs to be able to get wet and clean or, a lot, or, right? You and, know? Or like a trim. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. you were saying when you would sew something, what would you sew that was leather? You know, I put a lot of leather trim on uh-huh. things, not use. Well, especially because leather is expensive is one one thing that sometimes is right. confining. So, you know, you might put a leather flap on a purse you make, but not have an entire, and maybe a leather strap, and the rest of the purse is a, a different type fabric sure. or something. But you, so, but like I said, the faux leathers now are amazing. In so, fact, now they even make, you know, some that are, have spandex in them, which oh, yeah. is really wild. Yeah. You see the Stri- leather leggings or the yeah. pleather leggings. And I will tell you, they're hot and don't breathe. So, yeah, yeah, just right. so you know. <laughs> okay. Well, those of you who like it when our podcasts are 45 minutes long, get in your wish today. I think Karen <laughs> told us that. It's exactly how long her uh, yeah. morning walk is. So, hi, Karen. Okay. We got two more um, general fabric uh, categories to get through. So, let's well, talk. Oh. You want to talk woven? Woven, yeah. Because let's talk okay, about woven. so I think woven is a sort of when somebody thinks of fabric, they think of woven. Your sheets are woven, right? Most of your clothes were woven thirty years ago. Um, woven fabric is fairly stable. Yeah, and like if you ever had one of those little pot holder looms, you can. That's picture, how you wove. That's right. You can picture weaving right uh, you, you know your towels or but you know lots of things are your your canvas shoes are woven mm-hmm. you know the sail on your boat is woven all these things are woven so it's sort of our been our staple for many many years it has been our staple uh your you know your furniture is covered in woven fabrics most of the time if it's not in a hide or a naga hide <laughs> Well, and it's kind of the default, you know, your first sewing project absolutely was probably a pillow and, made out of woven fabric. And it was probably a woven cotton. It was stable and a natural f- fiber and fairly easy for you to work with. Right. Right. So woven fabrics, really all that, all they have to be is is woven, is <laughs> have, a, have a warp and a weft. And right. That's Which is a, fibers that go, you know, long ways and fibers that go. Which is lengthwise yeah, or crosswise. Crosswise. Grain. Right. Um, and then, but, you know, when you picture weaving and you picture the fibers going like under, over, under, over, right. under, over, they don't always have to do that. You know, they right. can they can go over for three and under for one. So there could be a pattern yeah. of wovenness that gives you a texture. And sometimes we see uh, in fabrics like jacquards or brocades damask. or damask that the pat there can right. be. Tweeds, patterns, tweeds, burlap. You know, burlap is a very good. That's um, a good visualization visual. of right. A woven you see, fabric. And, and those burlaps usually are one for one, one across, one down. Yeah. And you know, you see the cross hatch of the whole thing going mm-hmm. on, and that's a very good visual for people. So there could be like, I mean, there are books written about all the different ways to right. weave fabric. Right. You know, you can. And have, there are weavers out there. I know you guys are yep. out there. And Becca was even like, I want to do a podcast that just talks about all the different types of weaving. I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> that would be really Mallory, good. <laughs> Mallory one said, I think I'm going to get into weaving. And I said, go right ahead. I'm buying my fabric. <laughs> so um, you haven't, have you seen Becca's bamboo scarf? It's really pretty. Anyway, yeah. whatever. So, uh, yeah, tons, tons that you can go And in. wovens can be mm-hmm. out of, uh, well, the two things that can be is, is basically an organic or natural fabric. Fiber. Fiber, I'm sorry. Yes, they don't turn into a fabric until they're woven. So, fi- so they're either a natural fabric, 
Fiber. Or, or fiber, I'm sorry. <laughs> or a man-made. Or what they can do is take those two fibers and they can mix them. Yep. Yes. So we think of woven fabric when you think about like your first cotton pillow that you made as a fabric that doesn't have a lot of stretch. But like with the jeans we've been making, that's woven fabric. It's a twill. And when I was describing that three over one under, that's a twill weave. Right. Um, and those, uh, but there, there's some man-made spandex-like right. fiber in there that does give it a little bit of stretch. And woven fabrics, even that are made out of just cotton, have different stretch if you do different things to them. So, so you always have some stretch in a woven fabric from selvage to selvage, which is the crosswise grain. Right. So when you're thinking about sewing a garment, that's how the garment should I actually go around the body. Mm -hmm. And the lengthwise should be the lengthwise on the body because the lengthwise is the more stable uh -huh. of the weave. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but... Well, when you... So you have the crosswise, right. which is selvage to selvage. Oh, we were talking about lycra and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that'll always be a little stretchier on a woven. Right. Even a woven that's 100% cotton. Right. The lengthwise, which if you think about lengthwise, that's just one long Right. Fiber. It's the long, 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 long right? fiber. So that's why it's more stable. And then there's the bias, which is at a 45 degree angle to your crosswise and lengthwise. That's right. And that is what you give you the most stretch. Absolutely. Um, in a woven fabric. It's not going to, you can't like cut yoga pants out of quilter's cotton on the bias and be <laughs> and, <laughs> and hope that they'll feel like yoga pants. Right. right. And, and hope that hope that they won't split on and, you. And we're going to have to talk about bias in another podcast bias because is bias its own, is its own animal and I love it. Five, I love the bias animal. It's its own but, five episodes. But what, okay. and, and, you know, this is a little bit off of the path, but the whole lycra spandex thing, and those two things are the same thing. Lycra is a DuPont trademark. Spandex is the generic, okay? And what you need to know is that jeans were always made out of woven, you know, cotton cotton fabric den turned into denim, and they were very stable. And as they became more and more a fashion statement, obviously, and lycra was invented or spandex was invented, oh, my gosh, the comfort that was added was amazing. Yeah. Just to make, you know, they move, the, the clothes now move with you. Right. The, so. the uh, addition of that lycra, spandex, elastane, whatever, you know, the right. stretchy fibers really has uh, made a big difference in our in our sewing lives, in our just our clothing wearing lives. So should I tell them my spandex? Um, yeah, that it's an anagram, mm -hmm. and that if you take the letters that are in spandex and rearrange them, they say can say expands. Yep. So, Try it at home right now. So some scientist, <laughs> when he was inventing, she he was inventing oh. this. I like to think it was a woman. I don't know who it was, but they went, "Ooh, let's call this. Oh, this fiber expands." What could we call it? And they named it spandex. Perfect. Yes, I it's love perfect. it. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, and then lycra is an anagram of cry la. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. I love sewing with knitting. Y'all cry. <laughs> no, I, I love it. But anyway, so so uh you you have your wovens and they're generally like not you just think of them as your more stable. Your more stable fabrics. Versus your final category. Knits. knits and knit fabrics. If you if you've ever watched somebody knitting or seen knitting, right? It's not made up of fibers that are straight on your x y axis. Right. It's loops and chains, loops and loops, all looped together, made into a fabric that is much stretchier, right. much less stable. Um, in some people's eyes, more forgiving. In some people's right. eyes, more comfortable. And da 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 da, and same uh, for knits and wovens, they can be made out of any fiber. Right. Right. The knits and wovens, basically, as far as I know, I can't think of excluding any fiber from either one of them. You know, man-made, natural, whatever. I feel whatever. like they're getting more common. And blends. Uh, like, like really exciting blends are coming out. Right. Like linen 
knits. Right. You know, and I'm like, right. ooh. Right. You know? <laughs> right. That sounds nice. <laughs> right. So, I... Uh, you know, bamboo is one yeah. of the latest natural fibers that's big out there mm-hmm. right now. And bamboo is very soft, very smooth, and very renewable. That's yep. another reason it, it's uh, been... You mentioned... Uh, I was just listening to some of her podcasts, and you mentioned Viscose and mm-hmm. Rayon in mm-hmm. one of the... In the Fabric Snobbery podcast. And I think um, Stella McCartney... The label just put out a video uh-huh. that all of their viscose is going to come from like renewable. Well, she does forests. all. She, you know, she doesn't do leather. She does all yeah. vegan. She's but very all of yes. her viscose is going to come out of this one region of Sweden that's like renewable. Yeah. You know, and, and so. just just in case, interesting. And just in case anybody wants to know, when Stella McCartney designs a um, garment, she truly designs a garment, and you cannot find. <laughs> Say a pattern, even sometimes a picture of the whole garment, because Mallory and I wound up making for her mother-in-law the wedding dress for Paul's. Oh, I can't think of her name. I don't know her the, name. Is. The most the most recent, recent wife, Mrs. Yeah. Paul McCartney. Um, Mallory's mother-in-law saw this dress and said she wanted it, and we could not even find an entire. She picture. must have not let any photographer take like a straight yeah. on. Photo. I don't think that. I mean, it's not like you can go on and and. On Google that dress and see like a 360 degree view of this dress. So I had to take like six or seven photos and sort of piece them together and and assume it was made out of such and such a fabric because of the way it flowed, the way it looked, and all that. And honestly, it really turned out. Okay, mom, we'll do a feel free to compliment me episode. Oh on yeah, it, that okay? would be do, all yeah, right. That was, all right, that would be. okay. So uh, knits knits are made right. out of these loop de loop. Right, you know, uh, fibers, and I started knitting a few years ago, and I really, I was like, oh, okay, like this mm-hmm. is what I, I see what a rib knit is, right. and I see what a this and that is. So knit, um, when you knit by hand, your knitting is made of knits and pearls, and pearls are just knit stitches backwards. And so you can get different combinations of these to get different knits. And you so get different topography on the yeah, knit, too. Yeah, so you can get, like, the cables you see in sweaters that people knit. Or there is fabric sold that's, like, sweater knit right. that's already cabled. Right. And then um, a lot of times people will say that a knit fabric always rolls toward the right side. And I would say that that's... A pretty, uh, probably like ninety eight percent. Yeah, I would say most of, of the, the time. time. And yeah. I, I found that out because like I, I haven't finished this because it's really boring. I was knitting a pillow, and so I like one of my knitted rectangles, uh, knitting a pillow. Anyway, so um, <laughs> and it's all knitted, you know, flat. Um, the knits are all right. on the right side, and so it is, uh, rolling. All in toward right. my knit stitches. And you can see on the knit, you can see that the one side looks different from the right. other side. Sometimes it gets kind of hard on some of the real fine ones. Right. Well, but I mean, if you take just a T-shirt mm-hmm. and say, okay, so, you know, cut across the hem. Right. Cut, cut the hem off and then cut another strip and then pull it. Right. What happens? It rolls into a little tube is what it does. And then rib knit is a combination of like those knits and pearls right. to create the ribbing, the ribbing that you might uh, think the like around the neck band of your right. T-shirt. So basically one stitch is backwards to the other and that's why you have the hills and the valleys. Mm-hmm. And they're 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 alternated. Exactly. So um that is uh And that's usually a coarser feel. Yeah, it, right. it well it's you know it's it's ribbed. That's right. a really good right. way to put right. it. Now, I see on your notepad there you have NAP written right. down. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk about that? Well, I just wanted to add this because yeah. I didn't want to leave it out. I think it's a good idea. Right, because NAP can occur in all of these fabric. Uh, well, no, in the woven and in, in the knits. In the knits, yeah. Okay. In your bonded fabrics, you do not see a NAP. So a high de- NAPs, here's what NAPs are. NAPs are something that's sort of above the weave or the knit. And it might be like a velvet or a corduroy or something. And when you touch it and you take your hand, it will those fibers will lay down in a certain direction or not. And velvet's the per- best fabric to think of, I think, right. in this example. Right. Think of velvet if you're having trouble. And, and so the nap lays down one way and it stands up the other. And my rule is that I have the nap laying down on the body going down. Mm-hmm. So my my nap will 
lay down towards the hem of my dress or down towards the hem of my pants or whatever. Because if you think about when you wear it, that's how you touch your clothes mm-hmm. even. You know, you touch them going down with your hands. And You guys should see me. I'm Mom's stroking just, myself. Yes, yeah, just stroking it's, her <laughs> shoulders. Uh, it's really cute. Now, wait, you said... And, you know, what about ultra suede? Doesn't it have a nap sometimes? I no, have not really? a true ultra suede. Okay. Now there are faux suede's that do. Yeah, there are some faux suede's that have it, but ultra suede I have never seen a true nap. It's a pretty you're bonded right. fabric. You're right. Um, the other thing that you're going to have in these besides nap is things that are have a directional weave to them in some way. And one good way is, like, to think about this as a plaid mm-hmm. or even a stripe, I guess. Some, um, so they may be directional. And right. you need to, you know, check that out. Plaids are not always symmetrical. Right. Okay. Um, and I can't remember if tartan plaids are or aren't. I think that. I think they're one or the other. I can't remember, like the Irish oh, I thought they'd be like the different Scottish ones. I don't know. Um, I don't know them. I'm sure there's Irish, somebody out there. You're gonna offend some Irish. Scottish I, yeah, I meant people. Scottish. So anyway. <laughs> that, that anybody out there that knows anything about kilts, and I don't, you can, you know, those true tartans. I, I think a true tartan might be symmetrical. I'm not sure. I can't remember why they're tartans or whatever. Uh, I used to know that, but I so nap has to do with direction. You know, and how something has been woven directionally or if it has that that fluff on top. Right. 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 Um, Mallory and I have conflicting corduroy stories. Well, I I feel like we've this whole podcast. We're saying things like, I don't really know this. (laughs) Well, it's just that. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the denim story. Right. Yeah. I thought I knew that what, how denim yeah, was made. And, and that, there's no, all I, these. Well, none of this is written down. Right. First of all, most of the people that sewed these garments and made these garments were not literate. Right. Everybody. Right. So it didn't get written down. Mm-hmm. But I was always under the impression that corduroy meant um, cloth of the king because uh, Roy meant king and cord meant you know, fabric or fiber, but we don't know if that's true. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that it's a myth. I've I've right. read an article somewhere, and I, it makes sense. And I, I and know. I read uh, that right. no one was allowed to wear corduroy except, except for the, the people king. of the court. Oh, right, okay. right. The and the king only could wear certain. You know, he could wear like purple, mm-hmm. and nobody else could. And well, and, and that all, all that kind on of stuff. Right? Where you're talking right. about, which when, king you're talking yeah. about? You know, so. But uh, that that those are our four main types of fabric, and so when you're thinking about a project, and it says that it's if you read a pattern right. or some kind of directions or something, and it says that it's about that you that you need a knit fabric, right? You can't go make it out of a woven. No, now you can make a woven pattern out of a knit if you know what you're doing. Sure, which, but if you have the experience, here's the other thing we didn't talk about about knits. Mm. They'll talk about one-way stretch. They'll talk about two-way stretch. And they'll talk about four-way stretch. Yep. You're right. So Mallory had an issue with this. I have an issue with this. And it is really (laughs) difficult because a one-way stretch would mean that it stretches east and west, correct? Yep. Okay. And then a two-way stretch would mean it stretches east and west and north and south. Yep. So where the hell and how is there a four-way stretch? Yeah, I, you know, I feel like it, it maybe came up with how people have to buy fabric online. And if they want to know it's yeah. an all-way stretch, right. maybe that website feels like they have to put down So four-way, four-way stretch and two-way stretch is just about the same thing. Right. Okay, now everything stretch, stretches also to a different degree. Right. And you'll say, you will see, you know, 15% stretch or 10% or 30 or whatever. And if, if you get a pattern, it oftentimes tells you what, um, you know, you need a 30% stretch, yeah. stretch, which means you can take 10 inches of fabric and you can stretch it to 13 inches. Right. Because that would make it 30%. And you have to follow these directions. Right. Um, at, at least, especially when you're beginning. Uh, yeah. Especially uh, when you're beginning. And unless, you know, someone has made it and changed the rules. I really don't think you should break the rules till you've done the rules. Yeah, because I had right. somebody come in and they were using, you know, this... Uh, one pattern that was meant for a stretch garment and trying to make it out of denim. A woven, a heavy, and something probably probably well, too heavy and too stable. Yeah, and it. I just thought, if this is for a 
40% stretch right. fabric, and then you try to use a 20, 15% stretch fabric. She's like, well, then I was going to size it up, and I was going to do this and do that. And I'm like, why don't you just find a like right, the, the right pattern? pattern right. Yeah, like obviously. So I, I, yeah. think, I think it's a good rule to say you should – do the rules and experience the rules before you break the rules. Well, and that's why we went Because that way you understand them. Before we get too much into how all these different fabrics work, because we could probably do a podcast on each one of these right. different types of fabric, um, you need to know what these are. You need to have them in mind so that when you come to us and you ask a question or you come right. to somebody and ask a question and they say, oh, well, you need to be using an ultra suede or let's do a bonded fabric for this or let's do a... You know, uh, you need to use a knit, right. you know, uh, you or you think to yourself, I want to make something that I can cut up and it won't ravel. Now you know where to start. You know, you need to be in bonded land. And the reason know? they have those directions on those patterns or those suggestions also is because they want you to be successful. Right. And that's why they're there. It's not there to trick you or not make you be able to make what you want. It's so you'll be successful with that first, you know, tool that you're given. Absolutely. So if you have any experiences trying to use a different fabric than what was recommended, you can let us know. Or if you have any more um, fabric lore to tell us about, let us know in the comments. We're on Instagram at, at ZD Sewing Studio. And you can email me at Mallory at SewHere.com. Okay, Mallory, you're really going to like this one. So long, so happy, or so nappy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.